Hello, uh, John Flutter here again. I want to continue my series on the etiology of malocclusion by looking at tongue posture. And what we notice is that most children and indeed most adults have their mouths open most of the time. If the mouth is held open, what I'm going to suggest is that the tongue and the lower jaw move as a single unit. When the tongue and the lower jaw move from the roof of the mouth, it has developmental effects throughout the cranium. In particular, I want to show that it leads to a downward and backward growth pattern of the middle and lower third of the face. This downward and backward growth pattern is disguised when we look at cephalometric x-rays. We can see it when we look at children. When we look at children at play, we see that most children have their mouths open most of the time. It's very difficult to measure that. It's impossible to measure tongue posture. But when children do have their mouths closed, and we see that rarely, just by looking at the face, we can see the structure of the face has grown, particularly in the maxillary area. When the tongue is in the roof of the mouth, we're going to suggest that that leads to better cranial development. And I was explaining this to a group of orthodontists that I was speaking to recently in my trip to the Ukraine when we drove from Kiev down to Dnipro uh, to deliver a, a lecture to some, uh, a large group of uh, Ukrainian orthodontists. And what I wanted to try and do was to try and get uh, people to understand that the tongue and the mandible are a single unit. They move together. Wherever the tongue goes, the lower jaw goes. Wherever the lower jaw goes, the tongue will go. And what ideally we want to happen is for the tongue to go up into the roof of the mouth. When the tongue is in the roof of the mouth, the tongue is uh, the roof of the mouth and the teeth will erupt around the tongue. And what it will do is to create the ideal, the anatomical ideal arch form, which is the shape of the tongue. And we need to understand that this is nearly fully grown by the age of six. It's one of the fastest growing bones to adult size in the whole body. And yet most children have their mouths open most of the time. The result of this mouth open posture, which is impossible to develop, tells that not only does the tongue fail to develop the maxillary arch, but where it does go, maybe in the lower arch, will have an effect on how the lower jaw grows how the maxillary arch uh, grows in, uh, in relation to the rest of the cranium. Because when the cranial bones grow well, it produces attractive faces. And we can see the children or the, uh, the people in the top row here have got attractive faces. The bones, the skeletal structure is good. They'll have straight teeth. Whereas the individuals in the lower row have got less attractive faces, the cranial bones have not grown so well, and they'll have less well-aligned teeth and less well-balanced jaws. And if you were to move the teeth to a better position, it still won't uh, change the underlying fact that the bones aren't the ideal shape, and when the bones aren't the ideal shape and position, you don't get an attractive face. So you can make the teeth look better, but you don't improve the facial appearance. And the reason for that is, is that most of the growth of the, of the head takes place after birth. Uh, uh, the cranial vault is pretty much fully developed at birth and then the development of the lower and middle th uh, third sections of the face largely uh, occurs after birth and is under environmental rather than genetic influences.
And when the tongue is in the roof of the mouth and those two maxillae grow to the adequate size, what they're doing is they're encircling the nasal airway. So the nasal uh, airway is merely a space between the two maxillae. And remember the two maxillae have a suture with the frontal bone at nasion. When you look at the cephalometric x-ray, you're not going to be able to distinguish uh, the position of the nasal bones or the position of the maxillae against the frontal bone at nasion. Nasion and A-point are effectively two positions on the same bone. And it doesn't tell you where uh, the, the, the maxilla is within the cranium. And what, the, what we postulate is when the tongue doesn't push the maxillary arch forwards, it tends to take the maxillary arch back and thus reduce the pharyngeal airway. And this is something that's been known in orthodontics for a long, long time. When you have a mouth breathing pattern, when you have an open mouth pattern, the maxillae and mandibles are more retronathic. So the maxillary arch is underdeveloped, the upper teeth are crowded, the nasal passages are narrow, the pharyngeal airway is restricted. And when the maxilla, instead of growing more forwards, grows more downwards, then the lower jaw swings down and backwards underneath it. And we can learn more about this in future uh, videos that I'll be posting on this channel. Thanks for your attention. Just to try to make out the point that tongue posture is an important part in the growth and development of both maxillary and mandibular arches and it's very difficult to measure. Thank you for watching.